So I haven't been cycling for a massive amount of time like some people have, but certainly during that time, I've picked up on things that I really wish I knew when I first got started. Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Chris and I'm an amateur triathlete based in the UK. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you 19 things I wish I knew at the very start of my cycling journey just a few years ago. So let's crack on and get into the first one. I honestly think one of the best investments you can make into both yourself and your cycling is to get a bike fit as early as possible. See someone that actually knows what they're doing and they'll set you up to be as comfortable and efficient on the bike as possible. The cost of a bike fit can seem like a lot initially, especially when you can't really tell what they're doing, just adjusting the saddle maybe a little bit or your stem, but you'll soon find that it's worth its weight in gold once you actually get out on the roads. So you'll soon find that drinking on the go is something that definitely takes practice, but something you absolutely want to do. You'll find when you first go reaching for your bottle, it can seem a little bit twitchy, it certainly was for me, but as you do it more and more, it just becomes muscle memory and you can do it in your sleep. And you also want to get into the habit of actually continuing to spin your legs while you reach for your bottle. It can be tempting to stop pedaling and just cruise along and then pick up your bottle. But when you're riding in a group, this can be a little bit dangerous. So definitely practice continuing to spin your legs as you reach for your bottle. And you also wanna practice actually swapping the bottles between the cages on your bike. I find it much easier to reach for the cage at the front. So once I've finished that one, I'll take that one out, hold it in my mouth for a bit, reach to the second cage, bring that out, put that at the front, and then put the bottle that's in my mouth in the back cage. That way I only have to actually reach to the back cage for once to swap the bottles over. Hopefully that makes sense. So the drops allow you another position to ride in, which is always good, and it tends to be a bit more aero, so you should be able to go a bit faster. It can seem a little bit nerve wracking to begin with, as the brakes do feel a little bit out of reach, but again, it's something you get used to. So the general advice is to do your descending in the drops, but personally, I'm still building my confidence on this, so as long as you've got easy access to the brakes, do whatever feels comfortable to you, but definitely practice riding in the drops. Now being a bigger guy at six foot five and over 200 pounds, I tended to try and avoid hills like the plague when I first started. But eventually I got to a point where I had to accept that I live in Devon, it's hilly, and instead I actually embraced the hills. All I had to do was appreciate that it doesn't matter how fast I got them, I don't have to be quick. I'm not gonna be quick because of my size and that really doesn't matter. Like with anything, the more you practice it, the easier it will become and you'll have a better idea on how to pace each hill you come to. So I switched from carrying a pump on my bike to CO2 canisters in preparation for my triathlon races and I really haven't looked back since. They take up very little room in your saddle pack and are relatively easy to use once you've got the hang of them. If you go to somewhere like GCN, they're bound to have a video on how to use them nice and quick and easy. I actually had to use one the other day when I got a flat when I was out on the roads and I was back up and running in no time. You'll want to take at least two in your saddle pack in case you mess up the first one like I did. I was a little bit nervous thinking I might mess up the second one as well and need to call for a lift home, but thankfully, I got it right and I was away again. But definitely still take a pump in your back pocket as a backup just in case the CO2 canisters don't work out for you. Now it can seem like taking food and drink on a relatively short ride is unnecessary, but my advice would be to take food and drink on every single ride that you do. You may end up out for longer than you planned and having food or drink could be the difference between actually getting home or having to embarrassingly call for a lift because you bonked. It's one of those things where it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Knowing some basic bike maintenance can take you a long way, things like adjusting your brakes and gears and being able to remove both of the wheels. The likes of GCN will have plenty of videos on things like this and it's just things that you know that you'll be able to do easily at home or on the side of the road. It will save you having to spend the time and money going to a mechanic for something that really is straightforward that you could fix at home in no time. Another investment I made into my cycling that has been really valuable has been to get a rear bike radar. So I use the Garmin Varia and it's a rear light, a bright one as well, and a radar built into one unit. It pairs with your bike computer regardless of whether you're using a Garmin one or not and it allows you to basically see the cars coming up behind you before you can even hear them. I use a Wahoo Element Bolt as my bike computer and it will beep to me when it sees that a car's coming up behind me so I hear it as well as see it and it will also beep louder if the car is moving particularly fast. This has been absolutely great because especially when it's windy, you can't really hear what's coming up behind you. So you actually know there's something coming up behind you before you actually see or hear them. 
you'll see some people on the road just staying in the one gear, but it's really important to learn your gears and understand how they work. I guarantee it will make your cycling a damn sight easier and a lot more enjoyable. Like with everything and most of the things we've mentioned in this video, it's something that just takes a little bit of knowledge and some practice. After a little while, you'll soon get a feel for what a comfortable cadence is for you and then when to change gear appropriately. Now I'll admit this is something I'm personally still working on myself, but I do appreciate how important core work is and how easy it is to neglect it. You'd think it would be your legs that hurt after a long day in the saddle, but for me, it's often actually my back and my neck. And I know this is down to having a weak core, so doing some regular core work can help mitigate this pain. Now, it doesn't have to be crazy, just a few short sessions during the week. I'm thinking of building a bit of a habit and doing maybe two or three sessions, only 15 minutes or so a week, just to help tick me over. Although they can seem to be expensive for what they are, a good quality pair of bib shorts will take you a long way. If you're anything like me, it can take a bit of experimenting to find what actually works and what bibs fit you and are also most comfortable to wear. You'll want to try and buy them from somewhere that offers a generous returns policy to allow you to actually try them on. Obviously don't really wear them outside and maybe put some underwear on underneath while you're trying them on but at least you get an idea on how the basic fit works and if it's not for you, you can always send them back. Once you've found a pair that suits you, try and get a couple of pairs of them. I know it'll be a little bit expensive initially, but it'll save you having to buy them later down the road and also you'll have a few that you can rotate between. It's definitely not a good idea to be re-wearing used bib shorts. So yeah, make sure you have some clean ones ready to go whenever you fancy going out for a ride. Now rather than wearing something thick to begin with, it's better to layer up and have the option of adding or removing clothing throughout your ride. It's often the case where it's a little bit chilly in the morning when you first head out, but as the morning progresses, it soon warms up and you end up overheating. You want to wear something like arm warmers in this case, where you can easily just roll them down so they hang around your wrists or take them off completely once you've stopped. And they're small enough as well that they can just fit in your back pocket when you're not using them. So it's better to overdress in the beginning and then have the option of taking things on and off depending on what happens with the weather. So I'm currently commuting to work most days in my preparation for Ironman Wales in September as it's such an easy way of building up that general bike mileage. So if I take the long route to work, it works out to be about 11K. So there and back three days a week works out to be over 60 kilometers, which is actually quite a lot over the course of the week. Now I'm not going fast or anything like that, I'm not trying to get any PRs, I'm just going at a nice leisurely pace and just getting there to enjoy it really. You're going to work anyway, so if it's reasonable to cycle, you might as well, as it's a great opportunity just to get more time in the saddle and build up that general mileage. And it allows you to practice things like the bike handling skills or taking your bottle out of your cage, things like that. I use the Tark Trail here, which is uh, not open to the traffic or anything like that, so Perfect opportunity to do things like that. Now Strava is great and I do use it myself. You can follow me uh, through the link in the description if you want to. But if you're just getting started, you may want to consider not using it. I'm guilty myself of comparing myself to what other people are doing. Things like, why is my heart rate higher for a comparable run? Or why am I so slow on this route compared to someone else? None of that matters, especially in the beginning and so you should just ignore it and enjoy the ride for what it is. If you're focusing on building your fitness, my advice would be to set time-based goals instead of distance ones. So even if you're a beginner, chances are you want to get a bike computer as a way of primarily being able to see your routes and your maps, but also see certain stats about your ride. But my advice would be to consider what you actually have to display on your bike computer. I tend to be a bit minimal in this regard and only show things that are relevant to me and things that I can actually control. One thing I deliberately leave off is actually my speed. Now I could probably work it out through uh, distance and time, but the speed metric is something I completely avoid. I just find it to be a bit of a distraction and it could encourage me to go faster than I actually need to for that ride. I'm planning on doing a dedicated video on my bike computer, showing you all the screens and things like that. So if that sounds good, subscribe if you haven't already and be on the lookout for that one soon. Now it can be tempting not to bother washing your bike after a ride, especially if it's not very dirty. But you'll soon want to build a habit of actually cleaning it after each ride, even if it's just a quick wash. It doesn't have to take you very long at all, maybe 10, 15 minutes, and it's a nice feeling being able to ride a clean bike, and it's also much better for the components in terms of its lifespan. After a few goes, you'll soon get into a bit of a routine with your bike cleaning, and it'll be done in no time. So I got hit by a van while I was out on my new bike. I'd literally had it maybe a week. And thankfully it was right outside the hospital, but that's beside the point. Now I was absolutely gutted at the time. 
as although the bike itself was okay, there were a few minor scratches that I saw afterwards. But in hindsight, although I'd prefer it never happened at all, I'm glad it happened when it did. You'll find that scratches on your new bike are bound to happen sooner or later. So once you have that first scratch, you can stop worrying about it completely and just crack on with riding your bike. I learned to appreciate that the bike is a tool and it's not going to stay perfect. So stop worrying about that and just get on with riding your bike really. You want to be using lights both front and rear regardless of the time of day or how bright it is outside. They simply make yourself more visible to other road users and it's definitely a case of buying cheap and buying twice when it comes to lights. It's worth the investment to get a decent set initially, especially if you're going to be riding in the dark like I do when I'm commuting to work. Like I said, the Garmin Varia is a fantastic rear light and you also get the added benefits of having a radar. So once you've got that, you only have to worry about getting a front light. A bit like getting the bottles out, practicing riding one-handed is something you want to get started on sooner rather than later. It's a very useful skill and one that through repeated effort you actually master very quickly. You want to practice with both of your hands, not at the same time ideally, but for things like indicating to traffic behind you and also pointing out potholes if you're riding in a group. Now don't do what I did and only practice this with the other hand on the hoods, you want to practice in the drops as well as there could be a time where you have to quickly indicate or something like that when you don't really have the time to move from the drops to the hoods. So they are the 19 things I wish I knew when I first started cycling. If you enjoyed this one and found it helpful you might want to check out this video on screen here where I share 10 tips that I picked up through racing in my first duathlon. So if you're a cyclist and you fancy doing a bit of running as part of a race as well check that video out. Thank you so much for watching this one. Subscribe if you haven't already. Drop the video a like and I'll catch you next time.